Hydrogen, the most plentiful element in the universe. On Earth, we find it mostly bonded to oxygen in the form of water, or in other gases known as hydrocarbons. Hydrogen gas, H2, burns hot and clean, making it an attractive tool in the race to net zero, but isolating hydrogen from other elements is no easy task. Today, the cheapest way to do this is via chemical processes that break up natural gas. This releases a lot of carbon dioxide. Another method is to use electricity to split water molecules in a process called electrolysis. Although there is no carbon byproduct, a lot of electricity is needed. And if this power comes from burning coal or gas, it negates the zero emissions goals of using hydrogen to begin with. Hydrogen produced in this way, powered by fossil fuels, is called gray hydrogen. If carbon capture and storage is used together with fossil fuels, then it becomes blue hydrogen. If nuclear power is used, it's called pink. And finally, green hydrogen is when it's produced via electrolysis and powered from renewable sources. This method is considered emissions-free. It's predicted that by the early 2030s, H2 made from renewables will be cheaper than that made from fossil fuels. But that hinges on the cost of electrolysis declining, which will be achieved through larger projects and an expansion of manufacturing. To be clear, vast amounts of H2 are already used today. Global production in 2018 totaled 117 million metric tons. This hydrogen is mostly used for its chemical properties, not as a source of energy, and very little of it is clean. Some sectors like steel could start using hydrogen for these chemical properties, replacing coal. Industries like cement and glass may also use hydrogen as a source of heat. Another advantage is its energy storage potential. It can be stored over long periods of time, and used when more power needs to be added to the grid. It also could hold an advantage over batteries in heavy transport and shipping. The promise of hydrogen for energy has been around since at least 1874, when Jules Verne wrote about it in his book, The Mysterious Island. But the future of hydrogen will depend on policy. Countries with net zero targets, carbon pricing, and hydrogen strategies with investment mechanisms are likely to see the highest H2 demand. Thank you.